In my article, Principles of State Constitutional Interpretation, published in the Federalist Society Review, Volume 23, I discuss how state constitutionalism, that is, the interpretation of state constitutions independently of the United States Constitution, brings together two core legal values. The first core value is federalism, because in our Federalist Republic, we have not one constitution, but 51. Every state constitution contains guarantees of individual rights and constraints on government power unknown to the national constitution. And state courts are free to interpret them to provide greater, though not lesser, protection of freedom than does the national constitution as interpreted by the U.S. Supreme Court. The second core value is textualism. For state judges are oath bound to give meaning to every word in their state constitutions. Where the words of the state constitution are different, or if federal courts have evolved similar or even identical language in the national constitution away from its original meaning, state judges should independently interpret state constitutions to accord with their original meaning. Before the Bill of Rights was incorporated to the states through the 14th Amendment, state constitutions provided the primary and often the sole protection for individual rights against state governments. But as the Bill of Rights grew ascendant in federal jurisprudence, state constitutions were relegated to an afterthought. While that has begun to change, many advocates still focus almost exclusively on the federal constitution. That focus often leaves on the table tools that could vindicate precious rights. But making effective state constitutional arguments can be challenging. Few law students take courses on state constitutional law, and many state constitutions are poorly developed in state court jurisprudence, in part because lawyers rarely develop the arguments. It is a perverse circle. I argue state courts can help remedy this problem by interpreting their constitutions in accordance with five important principles. First is the primacy principle. State courts should look first to their constitutions rather than to the national constitution to resolve cases. Doing so not only adheres us to the federalist design, but provides greater certainty and often greater protection of rights to our citizens. Second, the serious examination principle urges courts to engage in reasoned analysis when determining whether to interpret state constitutional provisions in lockstep with federal counterparts rather than doing so reflexively. Third, the independent meaning principle holds that where state constitutional provisions differ from federal counterparts, judges should consider that difference as they interpret the text. Fourth, while it is true that state constitutional provisions that replicate the language of federal counterparts likely adopt the same meaning, state courts need not follow subsequent federal jurisprudence where it departs from the original meaning, but rather should hew to the original meaning. This is the originalist principle. Finally, the broader purpose principle counsels attention to the constitutional context of specific provisions and the overall stated purpose of the documents. State constitutionalism is no mere esoteric exercise. My favorite example is eminent domain, the power to take private property for public use. In the infamous Kelo case in 2005, the U.S. Supreme Court converted the Fifth Amendment's requirement that eminent domain be limited to a public use into a much more permissive public benefit standard. Thus, it allowed the city of New London, Connecticut to bulldoze a working class neighborhood to make space for amenities for a Pfizer plant, which ultimately were never built. At the very same time, the city of Mesa, Arizona wanted to bulldoze several homes and businesses including Bailey's brake service, to make way for a hardware store. Had Bailey litigated under the national constitution, he would have suffered the same fate as Suzette Kilo. 
but he litigated instead under the Arizona Constitution, which the state courts interpreted to require a genuine public use. Bailey won, and his business was saved. I believe that those who value the rule of law should take state constitutions seriously. State courts and those who practice before them should be the first to do so.